gathering here in Davos has become a regular fixture. Thought leaders from around the world bring fresh perspectives on everything from innovation to sustainability, from efficiency to diversity. They all agree on one thing, the private sector is crucial. Without trust, the future of our digital and AI economy and its limitless potential remains in peril. So far, piecemeal efforts to address cybersecurity issues have fallen short. Pinnacle's mission is to secure digital and AI enterprise by innovating proactive defenses and detection by a factor of 10x or more. I'm Rosanna Lockwood and I'm in Davos where I sat down with Pinnacle CEO to find out how they're putting this into practice. Rangan Venkataraman, CEO of Pinnacle. It's fantastic to see you here with us, beautiful Davos, Switzerland. How does it feel being in Europe? Awesome. Um, always wanted to be part of the World Economic Forum. Happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. That's quite all right. Uh, we are really pleased to have you here to have this conversation about cybersecurity, to learn more a little bit about your business, Pinnacle. Um, talk to us about what your offering is. What, what is it you guys do? Pinnacle, at the end of the day, is here to solve the following problems. Fragmentation, talent, the ability to improve visibility, and the ROI of cybersecurity investments. That's the problem at heart. What's a winning aspiration? We want to make sure that we secure digital and AI from a trust standpoint, using an algorithmic first approach to improve proactive defenses and the ability to detect at a 10x factor or more. That's our winning aspiration. How do we do that and where do we play? We support companies in the SMB space as well as large enterprises. SMB through a holistic program that includes what we call the full stack security that allows us to traverse between services, solutions, and platforms. And uh, the platform of choice for us is Cyber Karma. This is a risk rating platform and a cutting edge platform that really takes it to heart. Solutions includes XDR, which is the Extended Detection and Resilience uh, program that is holistic. It covers many, many aspects of the attack surfaces that enterprises face. And it also ensures that the new emerging attack surfaces like AI and bots are also covered. Then when it comes to the angle of how we plan to win in the marketplace, we plan to win in the marketplace because we want to make an impact. We are in cybersecurity to solve a global problem which is as big as climate change or COVID-like pandemics. Um, it is that insurgent mission that allows us to be the best in what we do, to essentially be passionate about it, and more importantly, make it economically viable for us and for our clients. And that is uh, something that clients think about, obviously, a lot. I'm interested in the kinds of technology that you offer at Pinnacle. I understand automation, AI, machine learning are really key for you. What led you to developing uh, the company? What was the origin story? The origin story is essentially uh, came out of Resilience, which is the parent company. And um, the aspect of the name Resilience essentially is we want to make sure that a product typically improves by stressing it. In other words, Resilience has a very simple foundation, which is it has a tree. And the tree, you know, apparently is only strengthened and the roots are deepened only through the processes of going through lots of trials and tribulations. And uh, cyber resilience is essentially a key part of that because it's not just the ability to control it from a security standpoint, but resilience as such plays a big role. And um, Pinnacle had to be separated because it sort of a, became a shark that came out of a fish. And, um, you know, we would not be able to focus on cyber security as part of resilience, just given the fact that it'll probably get hidden. It'll sort of be a needle in a haystack. And looking back, it was probably the best decision that we made. We didn't really know at that time it was going to turn out to be as big as it has, but it's really turned out to be good. And innovation is at the heart of everything you do. And when we think about the way technology has developed over the last few decades, we hear a lot about disruptive innovation. It sounds great, but what does it really mean in practice? In, in practice, it just means that you're going after trapped value. Disruption essentially unlocks trapped value, and that's typically done through innovative technology. Let's look at all the innovative technologies that exist. You have AI, blockchain, quantum computing, robotics, to name a few. 
There's about half a dozen innovative platforms. What's the economic value today? You have about a 14 trillion in market capitalization today that is expected to go to about 200 plus trillion in about 10 years. That's the value that you basically are going to create with innovative platforms. Now, innovative platforms will untrap a lot of economic value, but will also, as a side effect, create a lot of security challenges. Now, this is the perfect place to be. The addressable market size is roughly 200 billion, you know, depending on whom you speak to. But in my humble opinion, uh, the addressable market says size is about 2 trillion for the simple reason that there's a lot of underserved customers. There's a lot of uncontested spaces, unarticulated needs from customers. I think we in the cybersecurity community have to do a really good job in, in not only innovating the product, the go-to-market, as well as the business models around it, which will allow us to now untrap you know, the, the 10x, which is 2 trillion. Now, if you really think about it, you know, the number of players in the cybersecurity space is far less than what it should really be. Because if you really look at the value of cybercrime or the addressable market size in cybercrime is about 450 billion. That shows that there's a huge gap here. And that's the reason why we should continue to keep innovating because innovation gives you that ability to leapfrog. And today it can be done through a number of different mechanisms. There's a lot of players in this landscape. It's fairly established, yet new threats emerge every day. Companies still remain vulnerable to risks and threats. So why is it so hard to get cybersecurity right? It's hard because um, essentially you have three types of problems. One is it's not a technical problem. It's a human problem as well. 95% of the issues come due to human error. Secondly, you have um, the laws of cyberspace is very different than the physical spaces, which means in the physical arena, you have had decades or you know, centuries to actually evolve the laws and regulations. Uh, cyberspaces are just maybe two to three decades old. That, in an essence, creates a set of issues. The third thing is digital fragmentation. You have companies or countries that, companies that operate in, in, in many geographies, as well as in different sectors. Then you have countries which essentially have created wall gardens. So between all of this, you have a complexity that you have to unfold. Then every new innovative technology that comes creates a set of new issues. Take the example of AI and bots. Every technology is created with the intent for good. However, the second order and the third order consequences of technology is that they create a huge set of issues. Take the example of bots. You have good bots and you have bad bots. Bad bots typically, you know, emerge content scraping, price scraping, things of that nature. But the bot technology was created to solve specific problems that you can only do with it. Example, the crawler that Google uses is not something that you could have done with humans. You had to create technology to solve those scale problems. But it leaves a lot of trail where you have to now deal with the security issues because security is usually an afterthought. Security is not done by design. The internet never was thought through from a security standpoint. So security was a bolt-on from the beginning. So you have a fractured environment where you have to do a lot of patching to make up for it. Uh, patching, fragmented environments, all of this uh, leads me to thinking actually about the World Economic Forum. It is taking place here in beautiful Davos, Switzerland, the setting that we're in. Um, just from about this weekend onwards, this conversation is in the lead up to that forum. The theme under which the world leaders are meeting this year is cooperation in a, a fragmented world to solve a decade of inaction and inactivity. What do you think cooperation means? What does it look like in your world? Cooperation essentially in, in our world essentially looks like where um, companies you know, should not look at this as a zero-sum game. And we don't look at this as a zero-sum game. We believe that the addressable market size is really huge, so it's an opportunity for us to collaborate with what we would consider otherwise a competition. So there's an opportunity for many of us to come collaboratively to create solutions, which, like I said, there's a huge underserved segment that's out there, uh, es especially the small and the medium businesses, which are highly vulnerable to cyber attacks. Then from the government standpoint, it is very, very important that governments start to reduce the fragmentation that is already in motion, which means that you can be protective at one level, but you also have to find ways to cooperate at the same time so that problems like COVID, like pandemics, cybersecurity, climate change, they sort of fit in that bucket where no country can essentially solve it on their own. It really requires 
um, something like the World Economic Forum to actually facilitate a medium in which countries start to see the greater good of coming together, which means that the sum of the parts should be greater than the individual parts. What would be great is to understand a bit more about the operations at Pinnacle. Uh, I understand you've got one of your associates with you here today. We can speak to them a little bit about their journey within the company. No, I'm excited to um, introduce Ritania Venkat. Um, she's a colleague of mine and uh, my daughter as well. Um, she's chosen to um, take a non-traditional path where uh, she's pursuing an undergrad degree and also learning to be an entrepreneur and learning cybersecurity at the same time. The reason this is important is because there's a huge talent gap. There's about 2 million you know, unfulfilled positions. And hopefully she can share her experience with you. Fantastic. We look forward to that. We will... Uh make room for her now in the interview, Rithanya Venkat, Cybersecurity Associate at Pinnacle. Fantastic to Hi, meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Uh, would be interesting to know about your role at Pinnacle. What do you do? Why did you choose to join the company? I've decided to join the company because I've been very inspired by my dad. Seeing how he's grown the company over the years, I thought that this is maybe a field that I'd also want to get into. And as I'm doing my undergrad, um, I'm also learning so much from here, so I'm experiencing both structured and unstructured learning. And I think it's very beneficial because I can experience both sides of the world. What we're trying to do is we're trying to have a diverse pool of talents such as ideas and experiences. And if you really look at it, we're trying to defend our assets that way. So if you look at the research, um, Cyber crimes are a $445 billion business and the talent gap is about $2 million. And that is what we're trying to change. So instead of just pursuing it the traditional way, like looking at college degrees and the IT hub and, you know, the traditional path, we've decided to start something called New Collar Jobs, which we work with different people from different industries and come up with new ideas and tackle those issues. We're trying to teach them like how to do hard work, street smartness, problem solving skills, and encourage them to use other resources in order to train themselves. And one, and there's two things I see in common with the people that we're hiring. They have curiosity and they are willing to learn whatever it takes to get the skill right. And I just want to say that I hope I can inspire the youth generation to pursue a non-traditional path instead of following what society expects from you. And also I want to be able to inspire the new collar professionals and be able to tell companies that don't just look for college degrees and um, a specific hub that they were in, but just be accepting the new talent. Rithanya Benkat. Rangan, thank you, Traman. Thank you. Of Pinocchio. It's been fantastic speaking to you, learning about the business, learning about your role in the company, learning about your vision as well. Thank you both for joining us here in Davos, Switzerland. My hope is that my son, who has autism, shows up here next time and actually is also one of the examples of a differently able child who can get into cybersecurity. And I just want to tell people, you can do anything as long as you listen to your heart and work hard towards it and not have to follow society's expectations. It's a wonderful message. Thank you both. Thank you.